You're listening to Were You Still Talking? It doesn't need to be long. All right, here we go. Hey, welcome back to the show. This is Joel Albrecht, as always, and in the Zoomio studio today, I have Andrew Allman, who is one of, he's a very special guest. I've been doing quite a few podcasts with guests from podcastguest.com. And so I asked Andrew on because he started podcastguest.com and it's a huge, huge uh, um, favor for the podcast community. It, it's really helpful to be able to uh, go there and find guests. And actually I put myself in the newsletter and found uh, a ton of guests real fast. So I'm, st- I'm still going through those people, but it's a fantastic service. He is also um, a long time podcaster podcast expert going to ask him a lot of podcast questions and and uh, entrepreneur as well so we're going to get into uh you know uh at what point he's going to have enough money to retire and things like that (laughs) andrew thanks a lot for coming on oh excited to be here thank you very much you bet so how uh let's see i think i'll start from the end how did uh how did you come up with the podcastguest.com idea? I think that's just a, I think it's a really good idea and I'm surprised it didn't right. start sooner. Yeah. So I, I've been podcasting for, let's see, I'm about to do episode 300. It's weekly. So coming up on six years now mm-hmm. uh, in, in the current iteration. And I'd done some web radio type stuff before that. And about a year into my podcast, I had tapped my Rolodex in my industry. My, my podcast is, believe it or not, it's about domain names. Uh, I'm involved in the domain name industry, so I've grown from GoDaddy to buyers and sellers of domains, that that whole ecosystem. And after about a year, I kind of, you know, I'd had 50 guests and I thought, well, I need to have people that are new and interesting and that not everyone here knows about. And so I went out there looking for a free, easy, cheap way to find guests and couldn't find anything. So I decided to create my own service and it's grown quite a bit since then. There are now over 23,000 people using the service and it includes podcasters like yourself that are looking for guests. It also includes a number of people that aren't podcasters, but they want to get booked on shows. Um, so as a domain person, I, I acquired the domain name podcastguests.com and uh, set up the service on there. And it's, uh, it's really taken off over, over the years. And uh, being that you're a domain uh, expert and domain, that's your business. I really appreciate names like, podcastguest.com. I was um, I was kind of shocked that I was able to get where you still talking. I, I just assumed someone would have used that for something, but it's always nice when the domain says what right what what it is. Right. Right. <laughs> instead Absolutely. of yeah. Instead of fitness sites that are have Vikings in the name or something. And you're <laughs> like, what? What is that about? <laughs> So you have, I've had a lot of people on the show and very few of them had their own podcasts uh, from podcast guests. And they were mostly, um, well, from all all walks of life. And um, how did um, how did you like uh, get started doing that? What, how did you get started podcasting? Six years ago, it was podcasting. a much different industry. Yeah, it, 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 it was. And, you know, podcasting, I come, I, I have a blog, right? And so that's mm-hmm. kind of, what I've been doing for a long time. And the podcast is a spinoff of that or, or it's part of it, if you will. And, you know, w- one thing you're learning is podcasting is a lot more work than blogging. And th- there's a lot more that goes into it, right? There, there's equipment, not just right. the keyboard. Um, and there's sound quality. You know, I'm looking at your studio here and what you have on the walls and I have sound dampening devices around me. Um, and, and so there's a lot more that goes into it. There's editing oftentimes. Uh, but I think it's uh, one of the things that holds people back is they try to make it perfect right out of the gate. And that's not necessary. I would say just getting a podcast out there is, is key. And although, you know, I've upped my game over the years, I think just starting with an external microphone and a walk-in clothing closet to absorb the sound is good enough to get started uh, podcasting. So I like podcasting when I compare it to blogging. It's a much more in-depth medium. Uh, you have, in, in some cases, you have video, but for the most part, let's just say a podcast, you have audio. Spoken word is very different than, say, quoting someone in a blog or listening, trying to hear someone's voice through a blog and, and how they write. It also, it's kind of a longer form format, right? So when I do a blog post, oftentimes it's just a couple hundred words, 
Whereas a podcast, if it's 30 minutes long, you can really go in depth on topics. So it's a great opportunity to explore as well. Oh, it is. I didn't ever thought about that. I actually started podcasting because I'm not big. I'm just don't, I don't know. Writing doesn't, um, doesn't work for me. I'm not, I just feel like I'm not a good writer. And to me, it's more work to write. It's less, but that's sure. also because I had the equipment, but you know, to your point about you don't need it. Absolutely right. do not. You know, I'm a, uh, I must be an equipment junkie because I went out and bought a different mic, which I definitely didn't need. I've got a room full of mics. Uh, I was, you know, would have been fine. And I've had people on the show, um, uh, oh, as I was telling you before the show, you're the second one to show up with a mic. So if you're going on a podcast, get a little mic. I, I, I put together a guide for, for podcast guests because, you know, I was getting frustrated. Other people were getting frustrated. And I'm like, look, I, so I put this, uh, this guide together. It's just really short, but it's, it's the basics, right? It's coming mm -hmm. prepared. It's an external mic. It can be like a $30 external mic, but don't speak into your laptop. You know, Mike, yeah. it's just, what, yeah. you won't sound good and then you won't get invited back on. And so there's just all these little things that um, it probably, you know, you and I take for granted, but other people, if you've never done it before, someone's never told you, you just might not think to do it. That's true. Because, and even if you're using Zoom every day, I mean, the way I got it be is because of the current, you know, crisis we're going through. My wife was suddenly working at home and using Zoom. And so I started being the tech for the Zoom, because that's how it works sometimes. And, uh, you know, immediately saw how easy it is to use, but most people using it don't know what, it, they sound like on the other end, don't know, don't yeah. care. You know, yeah. they're having a meeting, they have no idea what they sound like in the meeting. You don't know unless you record it and listen back. So they, people probably don't realize um, how, you know, how bad the sound can be, especially if it's just, if it's for a podcast, because if you're gonna put this out, audio only nobody sees why the it sound doesn't sound good i mean i i'm kind of always struggling with myself about putting these out because it's like well when i put the video up people get it you know that's become the new the new look for for people talking is is someone on zoom and there you know there's two heads and they're having a conversation <laughs> it's kind of like the thing now but when you're doing it uh when when you're doing it the other way when you're going audio only, then that terrible sound coming over Zoom doesn't translate. Like it, that doesn't no. make, it's just like, what the, what's going on there? That doesn't make any sense. So the interesting thing is the mic on your head, even someone had, was having echo. And I said, do you have headphones? And he grabbed a pair just like yours and started talking into the headphone mic, which was, you know, a lot less uh, expensive. And it still sounded a hundred times right. better. It's, than, yeah. it, you don't have to spend a lot to sound a lot better. So spend, spend that $30 if you're going to get serious about it. So. Yeah. Yeah. 30, even, even $80 will get you a quality a very mic. You're going to be podcasting. Very good microphone. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And what are some of the other things on that? You, you kind of reeled through that list really quick. I think that's really good for people going on a podcast. Um, you know, what are, what are some of the things that are a really good idea when you're appearing, when you're going to be a guest on a podcast. Right, right. It's, it's, it's very important to come across uh, as professional as you can. Obviously, there are different types of podcasts. You know, if you're going on a music podcast, it might be very different. But, but you want to come across as knowing your topic. So you want to be prepared. Um, and, and you want to have good, good sound. So, you know, I think about the guide I put together, which you can get at podcastguests.com slash guide. It's free. You don't even have to give your email address. I just, I made this so that people would do a better job being guests. Uh, it mm -hmm. was, I was, I was getting, getting tired of, of people not doing a, a good job there, but there, there are a number of different kind of prep things that you do. So getting a good microphone, we've talked about finding a quiet place for recording I don't know if you've had this experience yet where someone calls in and, and they're, they're not used to podcasts. They're at an airport or something like that. Not an issue right now, generally, but you no. know, <laughs> yes. when people are traveling, but so, okay. So, so right now the issue, the same thing we come across with zoom meetings, right. Is noises in the background because everyone's at home and you cannot be perfect about that. If someone rings my doorbell right now, my dog is going to go crazy Right. And there, there's only so much you can do about that when, when you're at home, but letting the family know, Hey, I'm recording a podcast. Can you 
try to keep things quiet. Can you corral the dog if she starts barking? That, that sort of thing. And then I mentioned earlier, but a clothing closet is, a, if you have a walk-in closet, great place to record a podcast. You'll sound like you're in a fantastic studio. Um, I was listening to uh, Mike Berbiglia. He's a, a, a great comedian. Um, he has, you know, Broadway show. He's on TV a lot. And his, his little daughter made a fort for him. He says he, he just rolled out this new podcast where she made a fort with, you know, all these clothes and sheets and stuff where he records his podcast. And it sounds great. You'd, you'd have no idea that he didn't have a, a professional studio. Um, another thing I'd say is understand what the setup's going to be. So one thing I always ask, which is becoming more common now, is will we have video and will that be recorded? So right mm -hmm. now we're on Zoom and there's video and, um, you know, you might want to dress up if you're going to be on TV. And so I'm actually wearing a t-shirt, but you know, I don't quite have my setup quite right here, but you know, oh, nice. podcast guest shirt <laughs> on. So, um, yeah. you know, just, just th thinking about how you will look in that situation, but making sure you also have the right technology for it. People use a lot of different systems. Will it be Skype, will it be Zoom. Uh, ideally you can also listen to one or two of that person's podcast, or at least part of it before you go on. If you do a lot of podcasts, this is one area that even I kind of cut, you know, I'll go listen to five minutes or so just to understand kind of the interview style. Mm -hmm. But if nothing else, you ask the podcaster, what should I be prepared for? Uh, you know, so some, some podcasters have a set of five questions that they want to throw at you in a speed round and they want you to know what they are. So you need to ask. And some people are, are trying to get trying to get different things out of you, even interviewing someone like me who can talk a lot about podcasting and being a podcast guest. I always try to figure out, is the angle here how to be a podcaster? Is it how to be a guest? Is it how to grow your show? That sort of thing. So I usually try to, to figure that out before going on. And um, it's, good to, it's good to kind of have, if you haven't done a lot of them and talked about the topic, kind, kind of an outline that at least you have that you can go off of. So, so that you hit your talking points, right? The key elements that you want to get across in your podcast. Um, and then, you know, be on time, show up. Uh, oh, that's, <laughs> that's a good also, one. Uh, that's also a, you know, I was, I was feeling bad. <laughs> I was talking one. before we came on. Fortunately, we we're, we we're both a couple minutes tardy today, so it was good. But, um, you know, I, you'd be amazed how many times you book a podcast and the person doesn't show up and then, um, that gets around, right? People are not going to invite you back on if you, if you waste their time. And I know for me, I, I schedule my day around podcast recordings because my wife and I share a studio mm -hmm. and, you know, we put it on a, on a calendar together. And if I have to come in and record and the person doesn't show up and they want to reschedule, um, it's, it's very frustrating. Yes. It's frustrating. So, um, you know, from, from a preparation standpoint, I'd say those are kind of some of the big things that I recommend. Uh, the, the nice thing about podcasts and being a guest on them is it can be lower stakes than other media. So certainly radio, which is also audio, but it's live. You know, that's, if, if I really screw up here, you can go in and edit it, right? Right. Whereas right. On, on radio, you can't do yeah. that. A television speaking, I, I think it's a good way to become a better speaker and to learn as you go with what can be lower stakes. A, a lot of podcasts are long tail with small audience sizes. And then as you get better and as you improve, you can go on bigger and better podcasts and you can, you'll feel more comfortable doing live speaking engagements when those come back uh, and, and live radio and television as well. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, I don't, people probably forget that every podcast isn't... Um, isn't the Joe Rogan show and isn't viewed by 4 million There's people. only one Joe Rogan. There's only one. And yeah. literally, that's it. Yeah. That's, that's the big podcast. The, so, the, and, the but even number. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Joel. I was going to say, even people going on there, they're not reaching the kind of audience that going on the Today Show does. Right. You know, that's the biggest podcast out there. You're still not hitting an audience like, uh, you know, an NB, a, big, a network news show or something. But your point of uh, it's a good place to to get used to talking to an audience is a really good one because 
you know, I'm, I'll admit my podcast is not huge and it's not going to like make or break a career to come on here uh, and talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you're yeah, right. Yeah. But uh, I mean, the, the median number of, of podcast downloads on, on shows across the universe is fewer than 200 per episode. So, you know, it's not a massive audience, but it can be very targeted. And, and that's why I think people, when they think about you know, picture yourself sitting in front of an audience of a couple hundred people. You'd, you'd usually take someone up on an opportunity to do that. And that's what a podcast can be. Sometimes a lot more, sometimes a lot fewer. But also tell people not to focus too much on the size of the audience of the podcast you're going on. Think about more of the target. Like, who are you speaking to? Are they going to be interested in what you're talking about? I'd rather speak to a targeted audience of a couple hundred people than a broad audience of 10,000 that aren't going to care what I have to talk about. That's another really good point. Yeah. Unfortunately, I have a broad audience and um, that's just the way my podcast is. It's, sure. it's narrowing down slowly, but uh, you know, having experts on about uh, just about anything, but it is partly about podcasting. Uh, and there was another point that I wanted to speak to, but now I forgot what it was. Um, let's see, what was it? Nope, it's not coming to me. It, um, we can come back to it. We'll come back to it. <laughs> it'll pop in. It'll be like, wait, wait. Let's it talk will. About this. It will. It'll come along. But all you know, all those things are uh, really make sense to me. Uh, I think it was a and the also it's very encouraging to myself and probably a lot of people out there that the the medium audience is 200 you know that's that's a pretty attainable figure uh, at least in my mm -hmm. mind that's you know i look at my numbers and go okay i'm not not that far off of that and i think it's good for people to know that don't get discouraged if you're you know if you don't have huge numbers uh, i've talked to a lot of people who have had podcasts for longer than i have and they're still small even though they're extremely interesting podcasts i mean i talked to one data expert that um, he's about data visualization, and I thought it was just an amazing subject. And I figured, well, that kind of podcast, because it's so targeted, would have a lot of listeners. But he said he quit looking at his data. <laughs> which it's is uh, funny. I mean, my podcast is about domain names, and and until until this year, so, something has really clicked on it. But it's still like two thousand downloads is a great episode for me because there are only so many people that are interested in listening to a half an hour about domain names. Uh -huh. And so, you know, with a broad audience, you can eventually capture more people. But again, I, and, and this is something on the guest side too, when you're pitching yourself as an expert, you don't want to come in and say, oh, I'm a business expert, right? There are millions of business experts. What, what, what does that mean? What can you talk to me about? And so I always tell people to, to, to really home in on, on what it is. Find, find your own niche, be a big fish in a small pond. Mm -hmm. um, and the go-to person for your topic rather than just another business coach, just another leadership expert, because there's so many of them out there and making a name for yourself. And that is, is very, very difficult. That is a really, really good point because I do see, I tend to skip by people that say I'm a coach. Life coach is a big one for me. That's like your life coach. Okay. Isn't everybody, I mean, yeah, yeah we're having yeah. a life. We, we, you know, everyone's dad was a life coach. So the, I get that, that, uh, I think that's very important to note. Um, so if, if you are using that example, if you are a life coach, be more specific. I'm a life coach that works with people in their forties who have hit a wall and, uh, you know, and they want to change careers. Okay. Right. So that's, right. you know, that's more specific. Um, and you can even go more specific than that, but that's much better because if I'm looking through for experts and uh, I'm in my forties and I feel like I've hit a wall and a lot of my audience says too, that resonates as opposed to if I'm going through and I see, oh, a life coach. Yeah, okay. Again, dime a dozen, they're all over the place. You know, so I think being more oh, specific right. is, uh, is, is the way to go on that. And, and that's how I, you know, I have a lot of people come to me and say, they say, I'm not getting booked on a lot of interviews, you know, help me craft a better one sheet, a better pitch sheet for myself. And that's the number one thing I say is you're too broad, you know, saying you're a best-selling author and consultant and speaker. I mean, not everyone, but a lot of people are best-selling authors by whatever 
selling metric they're using, uh, well, you know, best, yeah, that, best selling at their address author. Something. You know? <laughs> that's, a, that's a very interesting point because I've <laughs> seen a lot of people that say best selling author and I look them up and I'm like, how is it I've never heard of you and your book is just sold on your website? And right. Yeah. It's if, a best selling if one, offer. If for one day they're in a top hundred list for their niche on Amazon because but, they got right. their brothers and sisters to buy a copy of their book at the, you know, it, but, but, but a little bit, yeah. you know, that's a personal branding thing that people do, but again, it's mm -hmm. a, it's a throwaway at the end of the day. And so I tell people to focus on the meat. What is it that you're an expert at? I'm an expert at podcasts or using podcasts as a medium as an expert. I'm an expert on domain names. That's pretty specific. Uh, and so I think that that, you know, really narrowing in on what your expertise is, Sometimes it sometimes it eliminates some opportunities because you're going more narrow, but I think that you'll get more powerful opportunities. And another point that the point I was trying to remember a minute ago is listening to a podcast. I think that's a really good I listen to people when I'm inviting them on. The first thing I do is I go try and find a podcast they were on. Well, what do they sound like? And, you know, Bingo. helpful if they can make complete sentences. It's, it's not always important, but it's helpful. And, uh, you know, things like that. And I always wonder when people pop in and I can pretty much tell they've never heard the podcast before. They have no, which would be scary to me. I'm like, what do you think? What are you getting into? Here? <laughs> you know, so well, I think that's a really good point, at least to know, right. like you said, it only takes a couple minutes. I don't listen to an hour podcast usually unless right. it is really interesting. Right. But yeah. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a good but, point. But and, 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 and that gets back to the, you know, having a good technical setup or a reasonable technical setup, right? If you go, like I always have people that have a profile on podcastguests.com, they list previous podcast experiences they've had. And, you know, if you go in there and you listen and it sounds like they're talking into a tin can, you're probably not going to invite them on your show. Um, yeah, it's true. It's, it's Unfortunately... That's true. I mean, that that is, podcasting is a listening medium. I mean, this is not a visual medium. It doesn't matter how good looking you are. And also... Uh, <laughs> that's that's <laughs> good for some of us, right? You know. <laughs> I also noticed um, on the site, just for, if anyone's listening to this who is using the site, uh, a lot of the links don't work. A lot of the podcast links, either they're not links, and if they're, they should be a link, <laughs> absolutely, or they're gone. So and you need to check that because if someone drops their podcast, I mean, it happened, you know, what is that? That, that is a, uh, one of the realities of podcasts is, is a lot of people stop podcasting and it's because they, they learn that it's a lot more work than they thought it would be. In fact, when I, uh, we, we featured you in my newsletter before I do that, someone has to have at least 10 episodes published because I want to know that they're not three and done, right. Or four and done, which is, which is very common. Uh, find out it, it's a yes I've been on as, as well yeah that really makes sense we're having some internet issues there so I hope that doesn't show up in the recording it may not sometimes you'll just see it here but you're still there so that's the okay. important thing <laughs> and that's interesting to hear that um you have to, yeah, at least that really makes sense. Because why do you want to put it in the newsletter if they're not even going to be there by the time the newsletter right. comes out? Right. Uh, and that was that newsletter. Um, I did want to thank you. I don't think I've thanked you yet. That newsletter literally saved the podcast in a way because mm. I was very, I was having a pretty hard time. Uh, things are really intense, you know, and uh, still are. But I just kind of stopped doing it for a month when this COVID first started happening. And uh, I just couldn't get the energy to do it. And, um, you know, when I got the amount of re all those responses, then I felt a little responsibility. Then it would, you yeah. know, it kicked me back into gear. And, and it was so many people that uh, even though at least one of them was fake, but that's, <laughs> <not a story. laughs> that's an off air how, how, how many responses did you get? I got, I'm a, over 60 now. Okay. Over yeah. 60. And so that's, you know, for a, a weekly podcast, Mm -hmm. that's a lot of podcasts. And, and you won't have all the people yeah. on, right? And you know, oh, no. it, it's, it's set up so that they have to pitch you and some people yeah. do a better job pitching you than others. Um, and so, you know, but hopefully you get a good, you know, 15, 20 or so out of that, maybe more uh, podcast interviews. Yeah. I thought if I could get 15 or 20, I mean, if I can get a couple months worth, which is the, what's happening, 
Um, mm. That's why, unfortunately, I it was like a few. It was weeks before I could get you on, and I was. That's a good problem to have. Yeah, it is. That's a good problem to have. And the other thing is, yeah, when you're pitching someone, you know, if if you go on podcast.com, you want to pitch to a podcast, give them a pitch. Don't mm. give them a sentence. I got a lot of one sentences, and those. You know, I don't think I've had any of those on. Um, two or three sentences can sound interesting enough, depending on what those sentences are. You know, I've walked around the world. Okay, yeah, I'd like to talk to you. That's very interesting. Yeah. But uh, the ones that said, um, I listened to your show. Now that got me some, you know, that gets my attention. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a good way to start uh, your pitch. I listened right. to your show and... Uh, and yeah, and, and they yeah. show you that they actually listen because they're like, oh, I like this topic and, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. And that's what I, I, I tell people, just when you're pitching, make it customized, make it, you know, personalized because they're trying to get on your show. You received over 60 responses. If you just say, hey, I'm a cool guy, have me on your show, it's just not going to work, you know, that you're, you're going to get passed over. So, um, you know, yeah, take a few minutes, create a customized pitch whenever you want to be on a podcast. Yeah, I think that is really good advice. Um, the uh, there was another thing on the tip of my tongue, um, but yeah, listen, listen to your show. I saw this, or I heard you say this. That that means they listen to at least that first five minutes. And sure, which yeah. is something just, you know that's it's, more it's, than any other people did. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, it's definitely good. Uh, so also, um, you you have been an entrepreneur. entrepreneur since you were pretty young, right? You've been you've been doing the, yeah. your own thing for a long time. Yeah, I was one of those kids who was setting up, you know, stands to sell candy in the neighborhood when I was a young young kid and such. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've been I, I've been in a domain name business as an entrepreneur for oh my gosh, fifteen years now uh, as a, as a media person with mm -hmm. a blog, and and that's what the podcast came part of. Uh, I've started an intellectual property licensing company that I was involved with for a few years and have really just had my hands in a lot of, a lot of different things. So right now it's the, I like to think of myself as a, a niche media person um, at mm -hmm. the highest level. You know, I've got the podcast guest service and then I have the domain name publication online trade journal, if you will, and, and podcast. Um, and so, you know, to me, it's one of those, career choices. You know, I went to a good undergraduate school, graduated top of my class, went and did a regular job. I would say nine to five, but it's more like an 8 a.m. to midnight kind of, you know, burn, burn yourself out kind of job. Um, and then I went to a Fortune 500 for a while and it just, it just felt so, my life felt so unproductive, um, especially doing the Fortune 500 type stuff. And so, uh, I, I haven't I haven't looked back really. Um, you know the for me the uh, the trade offs between the uncertainty of it versus the lifestyle I think are are well worth it. And also I think a lot of people give a lot of people I know who are are really uh, really gung ho, work really hard. Some of my best friends. Um, but I, I, I think a lot of people look at a lifestyle business is, is a bad word as opposed to, you know, growing something out crazy and selling it for tens of millions or hundreds of millions of dollars. I've come oh, to realize, yeah. I've come to realize now that lifestyle businesses, there's nothing wrong with having a lifestyle business that generates lots of money each year. It might not be something you're ever able to sell, um, but you know, it's still a good business and you're not working 50, 60 hours a week, that sort of thing. Um, you know, I, th I think a lot of the messaging out there online is all about working like crazy. Um, but maybe it's just the point I am in my life, but I, you know, you can reevaluate that and think about what's important to you. I think that's a, personally, I think that's a really good message. I think, um, I don't know if this is more so in America than other places, but it seems like this country is really about being a workaholic, that that's what you need to be successful. Um, you know, they look at a lot of the celebrities, whether it be television, movie, uh, people in politics, they work a lot. You know, they work insane hours and rarely sleep. And that's kind of become, yeah, like something you should strive for. And I've always thought that's not necessarily a good thing to strive for. It, it, you know, if you're a type A personality and that's what makes you happy, 
sure, you know, do it, do that, do as if much as possible. If it truly you makes can. you happy, if yeah, it truly if it makes, if it's not you hiding from other. <laughs> exactly, things, if it's yeah. not you trying to get away from your family because right. you, <laughs> this is your option, that or substituting work for alcohol or whatever it is, right, yeah, right? Then that's not necessarily a healthy thing. So, and I know that America as a whole is kind of sleep deprived. So, I think that um, work is something we kind of need to look at. Uh, well, we sure are now. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's everyone's reevaluating everything right now. The they idea of going in going yeah. into a physical office for a lot of people now they're like, why why were we doing that? You know, why, yeah, just why a, did I commute to work every day? That doesn't make sense. So. Right, and my wife's about to retire, so it's really bizarre. Yeah. So her last three months is working at is home, working from home, and it's made. I mean, she's more productive because there's no distractions. It's it's, it's, it's yeah. a. Uh, light yeah it's it's completely different you know i talked to so many people that felt like they could never work from home because it'd be hard now they're like i get mm -hmm. twice as much done yeah. you're not sitting there gossiping at the water cooler you're not having unnecessary meetings you know right. there's so much waste in what you do in a day um that it, it's it's really a game changer and it took this to force people to to think about that and to to realize that yeah yeah, if there is a silver lining, and I'm not sure there is, but the, no, let's try to find them. Let's we try. Need to, yeah, we, let's need, look, we need to try. We need them. <laughs> <laughs> but that is definitely one of them. Is everyone gets to like it? And I heard someone else say this: um, everyone gets to stop and take a breath, mm. which is an odd thing to say with this particular disease. But every everyone is <laughs> able to, you know, just don't take that to, breath around someone. With yeah, just <laughs> take it with a mask on. Yeah. <laughs> But everyone is reevaluating, and yeah, it, if uh, it's interesting because I have a hard time working at home because I'm not a type A, type a personality, mm -hmm. and the type of you know job I've chosen, um, it's all me. Like there's no one really pushing me to do a podcast. So, mm -hmm. it, um, but the other side of that is it's uh, it's a lot of fun. It is very fulfilling. It's amazing talking to you know all these different experts and being able to talk to people I never would have talked to before who, who've done all all types of amazing and done and doing all types of amazing things. Mm -hmm. So, but I, I just mean yeah the work at home aspect. I understand where people are hesitant to to do that, but it is if you're especially if you're working a regular day job, there's a lot of then you're you are already in that schedule, so mm -hmm. you just keep doing it. If mm -hmm. you're a writer, it's a little harder. Like some of the most successful writers, you know, write at exactly at certain hours per day, and that's a good way to do it. But yeah, scheduling, scheduling helps if you're working on. I find that schedule <laughs> make some time. It's true, right? It's true. Yeah. Well, uh, I should probably wrap it up now. I know you have other things you got to do. Probably other podcasts you got to be on. Got, got podcasting stuff to do. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much my day. <laughs> well, thanks so much for coming on. It's uh, it's really been great. It's really been a pleasure to talk to you. And uh, and thanks for starting the site. Yeah, yeah, you bet. My pleasure. I, I love hearing from people like you that I've been able to help out and you know, keep you moving forward with your podcast. Yeah, I, I really do appreciate it. So you've been listening to. Were you still talking? This is Joel Albrecht, and on the show today, I have had. Andrew Ullman from, now what's that called? It's called podcastguests.com. That's the website. Is there any anything else that they should know about uh, any to get information, or is that good? Uh, is that no, good? just head there. It's, it's free to sign up. Free to sign up, and there's a lot of information there as well, as, as uh, he was pointing out on the show. So thanks again for listening, and be good to each other, and also be good to yourself. All righty. Cool. And that does it. All right. Excellent. Dr. Gordon. Thank you.